I don't think state formation actually developed in stages. I think that's too tidy a way of thinking of the matter. I think it was a much more uh, scatter gun kind of uh, 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 development uh, that we um, see the state powerful in an early period in certain places, very limited number of places, but very, very powerful, um, very, very influential, um, but not so powerful in many others. Uh, and later on, we see it intruding in many aspects of life uh, and many more people being affected by it, but not everyone then either. It's very uneven. Um, I can illustrate this in a couple of ways, I guess. Um, one would be to say that uh, the state was very powerful even in uh, the era of uh, the French regime. Uh, the French state had a, 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 a very powerful place in a place like uh, Quebec, or Quebec City as we know it today. Um, at Quebec, the military uh, was a very uh, a prominent institution. Uh, of course, the military was there to, to protect uh, this fledgling colony uh, from the attacks of, uh, in the earliest times, from Iroquois attacks, uh, but also from the attacks of, of the British, who uh, vied for uh, power in the region. Uh, and the presence of the military was readily apparent to everyone who lived in Quebec on a daily basis. They couldn't get away from it. There was no doubt that people were going to behave themselves pretty much in Quebec because of that military presence. So the state was very powerful. But if we go just a little distance away into the countryside nearby, uh, we find uh, peasant farmers going about their business with very little sense of there being a French state at all, I think. Maybe the French state set out the general structures which in, within which they lived, but once those structures were in place, and that happened very early on, why life went on on its own. And uh, there was very little uh, representation of the center in the local areas. And of course, if we go to the Pays d'En, the, the, the up country, the, the, the Indian country, as it was called, to um, the state's presence was even lighter. Uh, uh, so tremendous unevenness. And if we go into the British areas, uh, into Nova Scotia, uh, we would find much the same thing. At Halifax, a great naval base, of course, the, the military was a prominent force and the state was uh, everywhere evident. Uh, but outside Halifax, as, as colonists began to settle Nova Scotia, why they went about their lives uh, without a lot of uh, contact with the state. Uh, the British state in Nova Scotia was incredibly powerful, of course, uh, when it came to the Acadian population. Um, uh, Acadians, uh, people of French uh, heritage, but who lived quite independently in uh, what we think of as the, the maritime region of Canada. Uh, Acadie, as they would have uh, thought of it, uh, 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 lived uh, with very little contact uh, with the French state or the French colonial state. They, they had their own social system that got along largely without a state. And then suddenly, in the 1750s, um, the British were concerned for security reasons about the Acadian population, about whether they uh, uh, would likely support the French uh, as warfare was building up in the 1750s and uh, the military governor uh, at the time, Charles Lawrence, uh, uh, in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia uh, decided that he had to clear the region of Acadians and this we know as a, the great deportation of the Acadians. Uh, you know, people just uh, picked up willy-nilly and, and sent in to many places around the globe. Uh, many starved on the way, uh, many families split up, a great tragedy. Uh, those Acadians felt the full force of the state uh, in the 1750s at a very early point. So you can see this, this unevenness in, the, uh, in state power and the presence of the state.